Good morning and welcome to Schumach. I'm currently standing on the Schumach Castle, a castle that is one of the best preserved forts of Hungary. It was built in the 13th century by King Béla IV against the Mongol invasion of Hungary and it definitely withstood the test of time. This castle was besieged by the Turks in the 16th century and was one of the few that was impenetrable. It is built on a limestone massif and if you look over there at the entrance of the castle, it is double fortified in a response to the taking of Veszprém by the Ottomans. They built a second wall and this became the frontier fortress against the Ottomans. Now, over here you can see the thickness of the walls and these are some of the thinnest walls and if we look over it I think it is safe to say why the Ottomans have been unable to take this castle. So join me as we explore one of Hungary's best preserved fortresses and the little treasures that the city has to offer including a cathedral, a bishop's palace and much more. <laughs> Now, in the 18th century, Schumach, this little town a bit north of Balaton, gained a bit more of importance in Hungary as it became the seat of the bishops of Veszprém. They settled here and the architecture, so for example, the uh, Church of the Ascension and the Franciscan Church, are both reminiscent of the bishops that commissioned these massive buildings, these gigantic buildings here, with beautiful frescoes, and some are very well kept. So let's go and explore those churches. Over there on top of the hill is the Schumach Castle and right in front of me is the crumbling Bishop Palace which is still being painstakingly renovated. It was commissioned by Marton Biro, the Bishop of Veszprém in the mid 18th century. Now if we turn around over there that's the Franciscan church and monastery. It was built in the 17th century, although most of its renovations were done the century after that. And it is hidden a bit behind the trees, but it is a large building as well. And I'll try to get the tower on in a second. If there is a locked crypt or secret entrance. <laughs> this is at the foot of the Schumach Castle. The main tourist attraction and over here is a beautiful fresco just like in the bishop's palace over here as well there are beautiful frescoes which have survived the test of time A little walk away from the center, we have reached the Church of the Ascension. The inside is painted with frescoes from Mauberge. With a team of assistants, Mauberge managed to cover the entire interior within 18 months. The frescoes they contain mostly biblical scenes. However, there is one exception on the rear wall, which supposedly portrays Bishop Biro himself, the patron of this church. He was born in the 17th century, 1696, and lived far until the 18th century. Now, this isn't the only church Bishop Biro has sponsored. He has sponsored multiple in the region. This gigantic structure, well, it towers above everything else in this area, aside from, obviously, the castle on top of the hill, which we'll climb in a second although there is lots of thunder and rain so it's probably not going to be as much of a pleasant climb as I was expecting it to be and we've reached the front of the church let's figure out who the man on this statue is is it Bishop Bira or isn't it no this is 
Franz Anton Malberich. It is the man that has painted the frescoes inside the church and inside many churches he has painted the insides of the churches of I think Veszprém and Shakespeare as well. The man watching the church. Oh, it just opened a random door next to the entrance and behind a wooden door is this fresco and this is supposed to be the shepherd together with Bishop Biro. And evidently this is a room that is not only not used very often, but probably hidden to the public generally. This is Bishop Marton Biro, the man that has commissioned this church. And I wanted to record this for a little bit. So if you didn't quite get what happened in the last sequence was that as I was filming the church, I wasn't quite sure where the fresco was of Bishop Biro because I knew there was a fresco, I had read about it, uh, painted in the early 18th century. And as I was looking around and I had asked a man sitting there and I asked him in Hungarian but I didn't understand what he said because again with an entire story and I asked him in English and German and didn't didn't get anything uh, because there was obviously a language barrier but then as we were leaving the church he opened this door this wooden door that you saw in the sequence and we finally got to the point where we understood that he said this is the lightest fresco that we have and the reason for that is you've seen the frescoes in the church and they were all a bit a bit how do you say that a bit smudgy a bit tainted by the light and this one is kept behind a wooden door without a light with a lock on it so i doubt that it is open if there is a lot of public every day because i want to keep the fresco and it is a fresco of the shepherd with bishop biro over there and this was painted over 250 years ago and it was extremely clear as you could see and well it was very nice of him to open the door i guess that we that i made clear what i was looking for unfortunately he helped us i didn't expect it to be behind a locked door or anything it was great to see now after this little adventure it seems like we're going to climb the hill onto Schumek castle the castle that was impenetrable to the ottomans I just mentioned how this fortress was impenetrable to the Turks and the Mongols and looking at its location I don't think it needs a lot of explanation as to why this castle on the limestone massive was impenetrable. I mean, if I sounded out of breath before and then, oh, it's absolutely, it's a very steep hill as well. Standing on the wall of Schumag in the first line, looking downstairs, you can see over there, that's the bishop's palace that we have just seen and it is still being restored. But looking at it from a higher point of view, you can already see that the insides, it's very well maintained and it maybe, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there are sacks of cement in front of it and they're building, building materials behind it. But looking from it from upstairs, it looks very good. And then next to it, it is the church that we've seen from the inside with the beautiful frescoes. And a little bit further down the street over there, that was the church that was commissioned by Bishop Biro with the secret hidden chamber that we have just seen and the fresco of 250 years old, still in very vivid and lively colors. Right now, I think it is time that we are going to explore this impenetrable castle. And over here at the entrance, we see the cannons that presumably managed to keep the Ottomans out. And the walls, the inside fortified walls, and of course the Hungarian flag, which we have come accustomed to after these travels, flying proudly over the castle and over Schumeck. This is only a fraction of the incredibly steep climb it is up to this castle.
walking here on these castle walls, it is very easy to lose yourself sort of in the thought of being a knight or an archer and defending the fortress against invaders and that's what makes history so lively to walk around in his ruins and imagine that 500 years ago this is where the siege of the castle took place and this is where the men stood and tried to repel the invaders and down on the hill there were ordinary men as well that tried to take the castle we have entered the bastion and over here the cannons are set up that once shot outside the windows down the hills at the invading armies. Well, it is interesting to know what the cannons were and what type of damage they must have inflicted. I mean, these are beautiful old, little bit after medieval guns, but look at the cannonballs, that's solid rock. They're extremely heavy and they sure would be able to put a dent in any formation of the enemy that would have set a camp a little bit either down the hill or outside of town. As we enter the interior of the castle, I wonder if this brings us to the outer walls or to something such as a prison. We've entered the little chapel on the side of the entrance of the castle. And this, this is where the knights and the people living here during the siege would have prayed as others were defending the walls. We've now reached the absolute top of a castle. If you take the stairs at the dungeon, you'll reach a higher level. And from here you can see the entire interior of the castle and the hill on the outside. to realize why exactly the Ottomans never took this castle. Hey. We've come to an end of our exploration of Schumach. We've seen one of Hungary's best kept castles, the impenetrable fortress on top of this hill. We've seen a church, a secret room in the church with a fresco that still retained its color after 250 years. We've seen the Bishop's Palace and we've seen a show in the arena at the bottom of the castle reenacting the fights that used to be here. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. And join me next time as we explore more of Hungary.